Well, I took this little trip to the Mayan ruins. My plans was to climb the pyramids and go inside and get real in depth in it. But they got it closed down now to where you can't enter the pyramids inside and you can't climb. But y'all enjoy this video, man. It's your guy Kimbo Greedy, man. I always grinding, so I'm never ever needed, man. I try to take y'all everywhere I go. Yeah, man. Like, share, and subscribe and all that good shit, man. Yeah, I'm on the Carnival Breeze, just in case you was wondering. Carnival Breeze, shout out to y'all. Man, they done fed me so much. I don't know, man. This is my first time going on the cruise. And I done fell in love with it, man. This is... Everybody always trying to tell me about the Mayans and all of this or whatever. I wonder, can they do this, though? Boy, just be talking. They can't show you what they talking about. Nigga, just be talking, man. Hey, fake Indians. These people down here, the Maya, it's disrespectful if you call them an Indian. Remember that. The capital is the built up of today is the city of Merida, or today considered the capital city of the state of Yucatan, the place that you are actually are on. Because now we are in Progreso. Progreso de Castro, not Castro the one in Cuba. Yeah? <laughs> Castro, but that's actually the name given to this port that we are actually are on because they were looking for a closest place, closest place to bring in part of the treasure that the Yucatan Peninsula had. So what was the treasure? No, huh? That's the first idea that we had in mind. No. For the people on the Yucatan area, the treasure that they had is the green gold, or what today is known as green agave. And the agave, it's what we took the leaves to get, and clean this up to get the fiber for rope, for bags, or what happened. Nylon plastic came in, and all this died out. Especially the haciendas. Or <laughs> GoPro. They're charging for those devices. What is your cell phone? They have video camera and have this camera. It's free of charge. But what is a video camera or a GoPro device they're charging for? Okay? That's when I got the picture. It's when I understood that they were talking about the Right here he showed us that as we clap. How they have it, the birds will respond or echo. Under the rack, you have your seat numbers, try to maintain the same seat. I don't have, I don't like to have a sick Mexican revolution. <laughs> I'm trying to you film, I missed two steps. <laughs> you see that UNESCO, you understand this is a protected site. UNESCO. Not you, man. Please pay attention to those rocks. Those are not two, three, four ton blocks. Those are just rocks stuck together with grass and stuff coming up. Mastabas. Mastabas, not pyramid. Mastaba. 
but the official name would be Temple Pyramid. Temple Pyramid. Okay. What is the name of this site? What it was a big city. It was the most important uh, uh, religious, cultural um, city that uh, is it, well, it seems that this society started living here 300 years before Christ. That uh, either by little development, 6th century mark the beginning of the development of Ushumal characterized by the construction of the majority of these buildings, which I would say that uh, thousands and thousands of limestones were quarried, were moved, and what was the Mayan quarry? Put in the information, Ushma, these guys extracted the rocks of three quarries around these buildings that the tent went by, and these quarries converted in small lakes, small lagoons. Mm. Right. So Ushma concentrated over 30,000 inhabitants, in which, well, as you know, this uh, society depended on. Agriculture, Armando mentioned something about the corn, uh, beans, and squash. That was the Mayan diet in Georgia. It's the area where we got this building, this two kilometers. And uh, there's, a, there's a place that partially is uh, protected. This building is in which the uh, outskirts of this plaza, because this is two, three plaza to perform rights and ceremony. Uh, there was a village around this building where lived the lower class of the Mayan society. And so these ceremonial centers were visited in special occasions. People couldn't come every day. I mean, when this guy needed to carry out the rights and ceremony, when some people didn't work with the Mayan society, they believed that their gods abandoned them. temple is over there that on that side we can see that the wall characterized by the flat work with the double X that's it naturally it's not representing those X is beer. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one characteristic of the Mayan architecture that uh, it seems uh, like a cross. Yeah, a lot of people of Yucatan that constructed their houses as Umberto I use that uh, ornamentation on the wall of of a house. A square shape. Okay, this is one characteristic of this period. Time. It has been considered after 52 years. They added another addition. They contracted another one on the first. Uh, I mentioned something about this this uh, architecture that is called Puk Puk style. Puk style. Like, uh, Take a look. Mm, that is the north side of the nuns uh, quadrangle, in which take a look. 
that uh, we have mass of a very important god Chaka, Yod de la Lluvia, mm -hmm. rain gods, near all these representing this very important god. That in some Mayan cities, Chaka rain god didn't do his job because he didn't send mm -hmm. a lot of rain and provoke that the Mayans abandon their cities. One of the theories that we got about the abandoning the, of the Mayan city is that they experience a long drought season that, pro that they abandon these particular cities. Come here, guys, and check more. Yeah. more yeah. The ornamentation that we got on the corners, my friends, over there, the wood white edge, the wood white edge, and the books, others uh, are really up towards, others downward. I mean, that way you can represent the house. Represented by the mask. When you see that ornamentation really upwards, is the this, this god is asking for rain, right? When he is in that position, is that would be sending rain for his guys, right? Mm. Uh, is mentioned. It's mentioned by the explorers. Get close, señores, por favor. Uxumal is mentioned by the explorers. Conquistador. Uh, the names given to these buildings, it's uh, name given by Diego Lopez de Cogo Yudo, that got here in 16th century, and by Diego de Landa. And these are the guys that gave these names. The original names are unknown. So, and you can, Try to imagine how was Ushmal Juri was explained. And today we can see with the reconstruction to fifty percent, it looks like so amazing. You know, you should go way out there by the door, and you can feel the bridge going. Where, where they live today, I'm talking about the Mayan heart, Mayan houses that are att attached over there on that side. Take a look. Houses? They are houses? Originally, originally the Mayas lived in this particular oval shape house that uh, only a single house was used as a living room, dining room, kitchen, etc. Today there is a variation. Besides, let's consider that one house could be situated on 23rd Street. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the house patched with palm roof or straw roof. But now there are two, three, or four more houses constructed on the backyard, right? Mm -hmm. And and now they can use it as bathroom, dining room, living room, etc. But I want to add something which is very interesting. Because probably you are wondering, Umberto, where did the Mayas bury their dead? Okay, the guys that decided, I mean, talking about the elite class, this privileged class, these guys live in this in stone houses really close of the places. When someone died, they were buried underneath of the pyramids, at the middle of the platforms, below the floor of the chambers of the palaces. That was for, for the elite class. What happened? Outskirt, where was situated the village where lived these over 20, 20, 22,000 inhabitants, when someone died, below the floor of that straw touch of house, they buried their dead, below the floor. After two, three, four, or five graves, the house was sealed, wasn't used anymore. And it was a family of seven or 10 persons, it was in time, it's no more than, senores, 50 years, the Yucatecan families, my own families, 
Y was of age of temperance. Mm -hmm. So that's why we got in my heart, heart and this side of this pattern. Okay. Ushmal constructed uh, this society occupied this side. They took advantage of the original terrain and the terrain that uh, wasn't in, uh, in, in a good place. They needed to fill, they needed to add to place a basement, uh, a platform, to add a, a, pla uh, a platform, and to start constructing. But I want to mention this, which is that Ushmal. Uh, that this day could be for Christ, that little by little developed. Without going back, a ninth century arrived here another group of Indians who came from the high Mexican plateau. Hmm? The Shues, Tutu Shu is one of the gods, one of the personages that got here and brought and another style of architecture or combining the Mayan architecture with this group that came from the Mexican plateau. With the concept, the idea to show another another man <coughs> with another characteristic. I'm talking about probably you heard about the Aztecas, right? The Mexico, Aztecas, Tortecas, Mistecos, then a couple of Did it. The giver of life and fertility was Kukukan Kukukan. Well, it seems that we can just pass the rod, the climate, the platform, only we have to find the rod along that side. Okay. Wow. So, if you want to take some pictures about what you can do. We have five, seven minutes to take the picture, take some pictures. I'm going to wait for you on that side where Armando is standing. Crazy about all of this. It's hot everywhere. That's where the Super Bowl or the World Series is played. I love this place to work. Yeah. It's better, better architecture. The Mayas inspired here, developing this pretty amazing architecture. What was their main water source? Is it the uh, out here? Yes. Yeah, this is lake too. Yeah. That That's whole thing you see right there? It's and the bottom. head is what is sticking out there on the corner. Oh, okay. Yeah, right there, right there on the left side. Right yeah. On the upper part area. That's where they get the ball through, the rubber this ball. Is, this is right here, right here. Right there. Yes, yeah, to the circle. Yeah, yeah see that. So you could use the ground or you could be out here to put it up. Oh, from here too? Yeah. That <laughs> is good. And if you I, see carefully right here, you could see the tail of the snake, and we'll yeah. see, we could recognize what kind of snake is it. Rattle. Wow. Yeah, because of the tail. And you could see there's no scales, but it's feathers. That's why it's called kukulkan. Or kukulkan. Um, A buttress. Okay. A frame. Uh, support. The huge pyramid, the huge pyramid. Nine platforms, nine, and this, and top, 
similar of the dual pyramid there is a temple in there there are figures of uh, different birds parrots matos uh, hummingbirds etc Unfortunately, we cannot climb. Another nice one. Amigos, over there in that side, you want to climb it very carefully. You can do it. And, well, yeah, give my eyes. Thank you very much. See you later. Okay, remember to. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. If you are 10 minutes prior of our departure, I will appreciate it. I talk to the driver. <laughs> okay, gracias. Thank you very much. See you later. Gracias. Yeah, vámonos. El resto.